So um, this, the system that that I was privileged to learn through my cousin in, includes the silk reeling and it, the silk reeling also within his system it highlights the medical qigong right? and that's what makes the qigong and the kung fu valuable so the, the five elements are represented from the fingertip uh, the center of the palm right in the center of the wrist Right, and it goes right down this line, uh, center of the forearm and center of the, the elbow. So it's, um, oh, I always forget. <laughs> so it's water and kidneys, yeah, and then it's earth, oh, I'm sorry, water and kidneys, metal lungs, uh, earth and spleen, uh, center of the palm is heart and fire, and tip of the middle finger is liver and wood. So when you do a five element qigong, you'll, you'll find these, um, oh, whatever, whatever the system they use, right, whatever acupuncture points they use or movements they use, that will be their five elements. But this system recognizes this line here that comes across from the tip of the middle finger, runs down the center of the arm, and to the other side so when you're holding Zhong you're holding the ball this way right? if your fingers connect if your palms connect you're connecting that whole channel so this is the pericardium channel so more and more as I study it's all about heart heart is number one pericardium is a heart channel and from the outside you have a you have the triple burner channel so triple burner is your intake, so the swallowing throat, it's your digestive, right? stomach, spleen, and it's your expulsion, your waste, so intestines and such. And that's the triple burners. So triple burner runs from the outside, tip of the ring finger, and comes on the outside of the arm, goes through the back of the shoulders and joins with the pericardium through the collarbone. So the two of them are always uh, merged together. Um, so when you look at the mudras, mudras are the hand signs, right? You find them in the, in, oh, you, you find them in the, the shamanistic, the Taoistic, uh, you find them in the religions, right? And you look at the prayer, everybody has this same prayer, prayer hands. Um, when you put the prayer hands together, Right, all the f all five fingers also represent the five elements and the heart. So, five elements, ten organs. And when you put them together like this, it's a balancing mudra. So it helps to balance the body. Um, so it's it's good for opening meditations, uh, prayers, and it's good for closing. So after. You know, after you finish whatever your workout is, whether it's very external or internal, right, and you, you can sit there and you can do these closing meditations and it just helps to make sure all the channels are, are balancing. It's like opening up all the locks, right? One is not higher. Or you see people doing uh, thumb and forefinger resting up here. So if you go online and just look for mudras, right, you'll, you'll find a lot of these mudras. So this mudra is very common. Your nerves end with the fingertips. So the Japanese have their mudras, they, um, the ninjutsu call it the kuji, kujikiri. So if you research kujikiri, then you'll see um, hand signs, what they call finger knitting, um, these kinds of things. And because you have all the nerves and the meridians, when you do things with your hands they're like switches in your body they're energetic switches so the kujikiri will re redirect um, to certain chakras in your body so i haven't i haven't learned the kujikiri for for the more esoteric or the ninjutsu things but i'll use it to um, balance my chakra 
But the Kujakiri is interesting too because there is energetic and there is esoteric you know, things when you learn it. And it's, um, you know, I was taught it really can burn the Jing if you don't have the transmission. And your Jing is your, your energy. So there's cautions about everything, how to use them. But yeah, if you don't have the um, Silk Railing Qigong handout, let me know. Uh, the backside, oh, you can't even see it. The backside shows the palms, and that that illustration comes from the uh, Shinjin Jutsu um, method, healing method, and they're all related. They're all the same. You know, they they come from the medical Qigong. Um, but the Jinshin Jutsu is interesting because it overlays. Well, well, they all do, but it, but it overlays the emotional, mental healing. So a simple, a simple warm up or any time of day is just to gently hold each finger. Yeah, so you can be standing there holding each finger right? and you can just do it, you do it for whatever you feel comfortable. Um, you can do it all day long. Um, and the interesting thing was thumb. So thumb to me is easy to remember because what do the babies do right? the babies suck their thumb and why do they suck their thumb it's pacification so that we think like oh we're not babies right don't suck the thumb <laughs> but if you we see it in movies as a joke and you're really stressed out or everybody reverts to baby and they suck their thumb right? because that's pacification so you don't have to act like a baby to suck the thumb and get, get the oral gratification. You can just hold with the other hand right? and just hold the thumb. So anytime you're in a stressful situation, you have anxiety, um, you need to calm down, you can just hold the thumbs. And if you hold the two sides and, and just put your mind on your, on your thumb. So you could be standing in line at the supermarket with your hands resting on your shopping cart, gently holding your thumb, right? You could be in a meeting with your hands just resting, holding your thumb. And these, these become, um, you can do one side and the other side, and these just become natural habits where you're not showing everybody your, your, tra your training. Like Jerry yesterday, was, <laughs> he doesn't care. In the supermarket, he'll practice his jong. So, and that's fine if you're comfortable, but there's, um, there's real subtle ways yeah, to, to practice the joints in public <laughs> in there. So thumb is, thumb is real easy, right? Pacification, calm you down. Um, yeah, you're at home by yourself. You want to fall asleep, sucking your thumb, that's fine. The middle finger is also very easy for me to remember too. Uh, middle finger is liver and anger. So thumb is stomach and um, you know the, the, the anxiety, the depression and stuff. But middle finger is, is liver, so liver and anger. So how do we use the middle finger, right? You give somebody the middle finger when you're angry and you just flash it at them. So it's easy to remember, but you just have to remember it's associated with the liver. So you, you have anger and your liver flashes and then it just runs out and paw, right? You give the middle finger. So you get angry and you hold the middle finger and you calm down or you just hold your hands. So when we wring the hands, you think about all those things, right? You're wringing the hands. Oh, you're anxious. You're, you're just full of um, tension, right? you're actually trying to use naturally your body saying uh, all that energy is coming to your fingers because it's your organs are and your emotions um, they're, they're coming through there right so you're trying to calm yourself down by wringing your fingers yeah. you do your greetings right you're balancing the hands just naturally come together um, you think about it even waving yeah we just think oh it's, you know waving but waving, right? All your, all your organs, all your emotions, um, they're all on display here, right? You're open. So you open your heart, center of your palm, right? You're waving, you're, you're greeting each other with your heart. Um, 
there there was a discussion about heart about you know uh, one of the instructors said, "Oh, my students are asking or uh, the Tai Chi for health hand sign, left hand, right fist. Um, can we do it the other way?" And there's all kind of discussions. Somebody said, "Oh, I was told to do it, you know, dominant hand, whatever your dominant hand, that's the way to do it." And my answer was, um, "Well, first of all, it's." Uh, you follow whatever your founder said <laughs> for your school. <laughs> you just do it exactly how your founder said. That's a sign of respect. Um, it's a sign of respect to the lineage, your teacher, to the whole system. Yeah? So really, you should be asking the founder. If it's okay, it can be done in different ways, or if you're not sure what the significance is. Um, uh, this is basic you know, Kung Fu greeting, right? Covered fist. The fist, of course, is strength. Um, open palm. Open palm can be fighting or can be greeting. So the covered fist is, you know, you're not here for the fight, right? You're covering your fist. But you see, um, you see the non-martial arts people turn the fist like this, right? They'll just hold, you'll see it like this, like gung hee, gung hee, gung hee, right? Just a really congratulatory greeting. So same thing, covered fist, but because they're not martial artists in fighting, right? They don't hold it stiff like <laughs> <laughs> they, don't, they don't hold it in a punching fashion, right? They just kind of hold it closed and such in a hugging fashion. Um, but things, every, when you apply it to martial arts, everything has a purpose. And everything should have, if you really study it uh, internally, everything should have a medical qigong purpose and probably a spiritual purpose and an energetic purpose. So. If you watch the monks, right, the monks do this. And, and the monks who travel all over, right, holding their staff, the staff has the rings on top, so they're shaking it to warn all the little bugs, right, get out of my path so I don't step on you and kill you. But they'll hold their hand like this. And even the, the Christian religions, right, they hold the beads and they're counting the beads. So what I found out early on is holding here is a basic protection mudra. So as the monks are walking, the monks have, they have energetic training too, whether they know it or whether they practice it. But this is just that basic kind of protection, very first level basic gate and protection and the palm scans. So while they're, while they're chanting and walking, they're doing their qigong, they have a little protection and they're scanning. Right? And they're doing their prayers all at the same time. So these things all have meaning. Our, um, the Siulam, we, we do this. And then we come this way. So where a lot of the Kung Fu, the fist is this way, the Siulam, our knuckles are facing forward and we come this way. So that's one of our identifiers for our school. And if we see other people, I, I, I really haven't seen anybody else do it this way. It's supposed to tell us, hey, you're a Fatka um, practitioner. So there's stories about that. Yeah, it's, it's like gang signs, right? <laughs> you look in the audience and you see somebody flash your club sign. It's like, oh, okay, I know you're on my side. I know you're a member of my family and such. So, but anyway, that's the, um, the silk reeling. Yeah, kind of got off track going to silk reeling. So as we do these, these movements, right, you want the heart channel to be tracing right down the center or tracing right on the outside. And as you trace with the palms, right, have that gentle intent that you're washing, that you're scanning, that you're feeding or feeling. Yeah? So it's not, just, um, it's not just mechanical, right, swiveling back and forth, but you have a little bit more English um, in your movement. You have a little bit more intent, feeling uh, that you're, you're, you're sensing and feeling and you're washing um, however you want to do it, but that there's a relationship. Yeah. And sometimes just for training purpose, you could lightly brush your hand, just very lightly brush to get that physical feeling. Yeah. And that light brush can be the beginnings of two-man training if, if Bond faces me. Right? Um, yeah, how would we? 
right? If, if we're sweeping this way, yeah, so you do your silk reeling, you do your silk reeling. Slowly, 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 yeah. So somehow I'd have to play with it more, but I, I know we can we can um, figure it out here, right, where it's a scanning and there's a connection. So as you're doing these, right, you're not only you're not only just doing the qigong for yourself, but if you're really feeling and your intent is to sense what you're doing, sense what you feel here sense what this arm feels then the next step is to transfer it to somebody else so if um if i did it for martial arts right and bond came and i sweep my hand this way right i may be gently touching her and sweeping but what am i feeling and how am i moving moving the energy so i could be running the energy down locking it someplace or taking the energy out of her body, right? If I'm doing it for healing, I don't really need to touch, right? I can just scan. And if I feel blockage, like a cold spot, right? I could just feed it, or I could just kind of run, right? run the hand back and forth, trying to open, open that spot, right? Just trying to move the energy around, right? And trying to wipe the energy out and, and such. So it's training for you first, and then you apply the training to other people. So you think about it, um, like now it's not the protocol, but when you greet somebody, right, you greet your friends, there's, right now it's high, but everybody really wants to do this, right? Nobody really wants to do elbows and fist pump. Right? Everybody wants to do a warm handshake. So what happens when you're doing a warm handshake? Okay. You're lining up the heart of yourself with the heart of the other person. Right. You're connecting through the heart, through the pericardium to each other. Right. So from here, you can do healing or you can do fighting. Right. And all five fingers, right? you have all five elements contacting and you can be sensing, you could be healing a person um, if you can take yourself up to that level, you could say, oh, you know, there, something's wrong with the heart, something's wrong with liver, something's wrong with lungs, and then you could just project yours to that person. So you see people like, oh, doing that really warm handshake, that clasp, right? Intent is everything, <laughs> right? Is it a shocking, like, hey, pa? <laughs> Or is it a healing, warm greeting where like, oh, good to see you. And you're sharing, right? You're sharing that love. You're sharing that compassion. You're sharing that warmth. You're, you're sharing your energy with somebody. And, you know, you, you get that. Your hand all hot now. You get that when you meet certain people in the community, right? Your, um, certain religious people, certain um, healthcare workers, um, caretakers sometimes they're just really warm you grab their hand and you think oh, their hand is always soft it's always warm it, it could be they could be steel worker right automotive worker farm worker but when you grab their hand it's strong but there's a warmth and there's a softness to it right? it's not cold and hard so as we do the silk reeling right, you're developing this in yourself you're developing in this this scale of healing um, sensing, compassion, you're, you're, you're cultivating all of these abilities in yourself. So yesterday, you know, I emphasize expand, expand, but relax. Right? It sounds so simple, but it's a very profound skill that you can apply. So as you expand and relax and you run the energy, right, you're allowing that energy to run through your whole body. So, um, whether, whether we do the Tai Chi for Health this way, right? There's still that five elements inside, right? You're still scanning. Or whether we do it how I like to do it in the seated, from side to side, there's still that same thing, right? Running it through 
back and forth and you can always run it all the way up and shoot it all the way down so later on we'll get we'll get back into the silk reading exercises um, but I want to finish up the uh, the eight brocades of silk and do the young do the young set okay all right so extend your legs come up take a nice deep breath let everything open and relax uh, for people in Lanakila, Susie just sent out a notice about my Sunday classes so Sunday classes will be run through Lanakila multi-purpose senior center and she's created a zoom uh, zoom link and account so I'll forward that to everybody and they'll all, right now they'll only be for Sunday classes for we'll try it out for two months and the rest of the classes will be will be here on the Google Meet platform yeah. all right rest your palms up if you want to do this mudra thumb and forefinger together lightly resting just sit nice and relaxed perfect posture it's lightly expanded not too much drop your chin a little imagine the top of your head open connected way up in the universe imagine a funnel cloud connecting to the top of your head way up into the universe to the sun or the stars it can be white it can be violet and it runs down through the center of your body through your spine through the center to the perineum right? going right into the ground another little spiral spiraling into the earth at the same time the energy is also running through your legs through the bottom of your feet sinking into the earth breathing relax arms in front of you release all tension in your body just holding a nice relaxed perfect posture light expansion but relaxed stomach relaxed you can feel your waist moving as your, as your belly expands and contracts let the air sink let your legs fall a little heavy Let the top of your head be suspended from above. Take your time. slowly open your eyes bring your hands up in front of you feel the shoulder blades moving nice deep breath in put your mind high up in the sky drop your palms so your fingertips dangle and just point to the top of your head your crown then drop your wrist drop your elbows guide the chi down through your body relax your hip and pelvic extend your legs cycle the chi down into the earth displacing the earth chi the earth chi rises around you and you can gather it up and recycle it down through your body the top of your head is opened high into the universe coordinate your breathing taking your time breathe from under the earth pull the chi up through your legs through all the muscle tissue 
through the back, the neck, over the top of your head, down the front of your body, back into the earth. Relax your breathing. Keep your shoulders down, elbows down. Start pulling the chi up through your bones. Every bone in your toe, your ankle, your heels, your legs, your hips, the spine, the ribs, your skull, the bones in your arms. Imagine the chi running through the bone marrow stimulating the bone marrow running through the nerves cleaning flushing removing inflammation creating blood moving the blood moving the chi building new bones stimulating the whole body stimulating all the bones inside of the bones the bones do more than just give us structure, they create cells that we need. So move slowly, so you can imagine the chi running through all the bones in your body. Don't rush the movement. Come up from the side eyes looking far away, stretch the fingertips, pull the chi in, exhale, drop your elbows, your shoulders, not too high, extend and expand, creating a big spiral, right? the head is turning, you can just feel the tantin turning, with your mind, Put your mind in your lower tantian and turn the lower tantian to the direction and let the body follow. Relax the stomach so you can feel, you can feel the center inside, lower belly turning inside of you. Don't restrict the movement. Scooping down, filling up the whole body like scooping up water soaking it all in deep breath squeeze and exhale let go relax fill up all the bones squeeze dynamic tension and let go twisting all the ligaments and tendons in the whole body and let go so that you can do by yourself later just take your time not too strong you'd be surprised how you can actually pull the muscle with too much dynamic tension you okay, sit nice and straight relax make sure the neck is relaxed fingertips are open relax the, the chest relax the solar plex the stomach Feel the stomach sink as you let, let everything go. Feel the pelvic joint sink and try to tilt the pelvic forward a little bit, even in the chair. Okay, number one, coming up, just to the mouth. Notice my elbows are down, breathing in, and guiding the chi back down, center. With your shoulder blades, lift and pull the chi up through your body, through your palms pressing upwards and back down returning back to center again breathing in this is eight brocades of silk and out and in and out on your own, do them as many times as you need to. In general, you want to do three times each side or six times altogether. 
and that's it's just a standard structured minimum finish the movement let everything go before you begin again time. You feel like you're pulling a syringe, pulling a piston up, pressing and guiding it back down, straight down. Okay, number two, both palms come up, left palm folds on top, right palm on the bottom, one palm pressing up, palm pressing down, and turn and follow the hand. Roll your head, roll your neck. Release, breathing in, right side, right hand on top, both palms facing down, folding. Breathing in, expand, feel that stretch going through the back, through the spine, through the hip. Relax and come up and repeat. Breathe in and out. Take your time. Breathe in. Feel the shoulder blades stretching away from each other. And in and out. Finish the breath and in and out. One more time, in and out, and in and out, and in, last time, right side, and out. Number three, both palms up, both palms down. Exhale and look to the left. Coming back to center to finish. Finish the breath. And then up, breathing in. Look to the right. Back to the center. In and out. Yeah, again, when, when we learned this uh, Qigong from the Taiwan teacher, he actually did this move a lot faster. But I prefer this piece. Maybe if you're younger. <laughs> and, you, <clears throat> and your neck and your shoulders aren't so stiff. Yeah, faster is okay, or you're doing it all the time, but yeah, I, I like this pace of the movement. Do one more time. As you come down right here, bend your elbows. Bend your elbows. Bend your elbows. There you go. And relax. Okay, number four, opening up the heart, the rib cage, the chest. Breathing in, squeeze the shoulder blades together. And up, and palm over palm. Again, breathing in. Being careful not to pull the head back, but squeeze the shoulder blades, and up. Collecting and in and out and in and out and one more time in 
and out. Okay, next one, bow and arrow. Left hand inside. Left hand pulls the bow and looking to your right. Shoulders down, elbows down, exhaling. And back to the center, loose fists and gently releasing, coming back to center. Breathing in, right hand on the inside. Hi, Violet. Drawing the bow, looking to your left, through the thumb and forefinger, looking at the horizon. Coming back to center and releasing. Be sure your legs are extended. Left hand inside, breathing in and out, looking to your right. Drop your shoulder, bend your elbow. You can start to add the kidney at any time. And all you have to do is tilt to open up the kidney. So I'll see people doing it um, right from the beginning like this. Or I'll see people Pulling the stretch first and then tilting. So it's whichever kind of appeals to you. But the main thing is that if you're, by doing this, you're helping to open the kidneys and add that flow to the movement. One last time, breathing in and out. and back and down. Okay, like moving to the hips, hand on the knees. You open your stance a little bit, shift to one side, and just gently roll, looking from toe to toe to the heel. Keep the hands on the knees to look behind you. Shifting and back to center and up. Okay, and then shifting. So complete the movement. And breathe regular. Just alternating between left and right side. Yeah, good. can involve your shoulder blade a little bit more if you want to. Turn the waist. And last time. Okay. All right. Um, oh. Punches. So as you breathe in, just slide the hand against the body. Right? Remember the silk reeling. Remember um, touching and just a light, light friction against the body. Right? This is water. This is kidney movement and water element. Anytime your hand comes to here, your hip bone is right here. So this slides right above the hip bone. Yeah. When I was skinnier, I had a little pocket here. I could feel my hand resting on my hip. <laughs> I'm not that skinny anymore. So now it pops out a little bit, but good thing I trained it. I know where it is, where my hip is. Yeah. But you want this to be relaxed, right? Don't lift this up when you pull. Don't yank it back. Just let it slide into place. Right? Palms open, or I'm sorry, palms open, and then making a loose fist. Breathing in and just a nice low punch right to the center, right to your solar plex, right? Not too high between solar plex and heart. Right? If you lift too high, you'll have the tendency to lift your shoulder and we don't want that. When you do the punch, use your shoulder blade. So nice deep breath and ha. And you want to feel that little vibration, that ha. You'll feel your body just vibrate a little bit, so don't be stiff. Um, 
fist is closed but not tight. It's, it's not dynamic tension. It's just closed. It's just sealed. That's all it is. Okay, so hands at the side, sitting straight, looking straight ahead, chin down a little bit, breathing in. Left hand first, and ha! Huh, drop it down across your body, height of your nose, drop your shoulder blade, sliding it against your body, palms over palms, and down to the side. Okay, right side, breathing in, right hand. Going across the body, just relax the shoulder joint when you do that. Breathing in and out. Breathing in, left side. <sighs> Express yourself. Let the air come out. Use the ha sound. Right side. This is a kind of dynamic movement. If you have a little lap dog or cat in the room or on your lap, they sh you should scare them away with your movement. <sighs> they should be a little shocked at first until they realize you're not going after them. <laughs> <sighs> and down. So if we're doing standing, this would involve squatting and involve the legs more. Okay, and um, yeah, hands on the kidneys. Just relax, take a deep breath first. If you want, you can always warm up your hands first, right? Trace the back. Follow with your mind, the fingertips going all the way around the center of your palms, coming up, really emphasizing kidney and liver channel as you come up. And again, if we were standing, it would involve a lot more leg movement would be built in naturally with the movement. Okay. So if I'm standing, right, we'd have the squatting. And with the squatting, you're going to have more, um, more movement and involvement of not just your leg muscles, but everything from the hip down in your this would help your, um, even your lower back as you're coming down, your lumbar to stretch a little bit. It's gonna work your, your glutes, your piriformis muscles. So they're very simple, intelligent movements. If you do it all day, you get a minimum of exercise, a full range, full body exercise. And relax. Yeah, hands down and breathing in and pressing down. You're pressing with the heel of your palm down so you're stretching your, your shoulder down. Breathing in and out. <sighs> when you're standing, drop your whole body. Let your whole body shake. If you're seating, you have to kind of, you still have to relax, but just throw your heel down a little bit. But, you know, just really shake, shake your whole arms. So in. Out, huh. in, out, huh. in, out, huh. yeah, shoulders down, stretching down, huh. shoulders down, pressing to the floor, huh. so heels up, but palms pressing to the floor, huh. one more time, huh. and then rocking back and forth, and going up on the toes to heel. Relax the bottom of the feet, so the bottom of the feet press on the ground. Get a little massage while you loosen up all the joints. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so one of the things you should practice, um, for, just to kind of add, remind everybody about the fall prevention, is if you're standing, right, just practice um, Unlocking your joints. Just practice sinking like that. And when you sink, you have to relax, right? You don't want to lean anywhere. You just, just dropping down a little bit, but do it really quickly. Just drop, J just a little bit, right? 
And what you're doing is you're letting go of all the tension. You're letting go of all the tension in all your joints. Which as you drop down, if you, if you watch how I drop, I, I don't lean. I'm trying to just go straight down. So remember that thread pulling and holding yourself up from here. So you're dropping straight down. Yeah, just learn to release. So when in that, um, the ending of the warm up, that's what we're doing, right? You're creating this tension in your body and then you're releasing. <sighs> you're creating that dyna dynamic tension and you're learning to release. So the fall prevention in there is more than just, um, you know, making sure your Achilles heel is tendon is, is relaxed and all your joints are relaxed and so that you don't stiffen up and fall. But really what it is, is if, um, here, bun, stand up. So if you're walking or standing and you're in, you're in a position where, where you come up a little bit and come up a little, no, trying to stiffen and, and you're out, you feel yourself out of balance, just drop straight down, just drop. Yeah, bend like this, drop all the way down. Drop all the way down. Yeah, but you see how her toes came up? So if you tighten, if when she tightens her feet, that throws her back, right? Her base is unstable. So you just have to drop. You have to let the legs become heavy. There, that was a nice little thud there. And look straight. You come up and yeah, you let everything go. Just let everything shake and let go. Yeah, and just drop one time. There. So if you practice that, that's actually fall prevention. <laughs> so what I tell, what I tell um, my seniors at Lanakila is that I, for myself, I, I, you know, it's a good skill to learn how to roll if you fall. And there are classes that teach you how to roll, but when you talk to seniors who have attended that class, right? The first day you have 10, the second day you have eight or seven because not every senior is at a place where they can fall on the ground. So what, here, you can sit down. So the way I look at it is if you're, you're walking, it's a common thing. Um, A lot of the falls when you're walking are initiated by not picking up the feet. So you have cracks in the sidewalk, you, you catch something, right? You're tripping. Um, you're tripping, maybe the ankles are tight, the Achilles tendon is tight and you stiffen up, but you're falling forward. So the fight or flight response is to do this. Okay? So you're tripping and automatically everybody goes like this. But when you go like this to break your fall, and as we get older and we don't have that control anymore to, to right, the, um, end up in a plank, in a push-up, as you come down right, from here, all of this is hitting the ground, not just your knees, but the foot, the ankle, and then as they lay out here, right, you end up like this. So, when you tend to look at seniors, and when I talk about seniors, I could be talking, you know, in the 40s and up, 50s and up. When they fall, and you see them when they fall, I was shocked because you see the bruise all the way up the body, on the face, right? The nose, the eyes, the cheeks, the mouth area, all the hands, everything is bruised. So, they're tripping and automatically they're just going out. So it made me realize um, the prevention is also minimizing what happens. So if, if you practice, right, and a lot of you have carpets, and this is a good thing, practice at home, right? You can support with a chair next to you, but just practice going down, right? I can use a chair to help support me. I can have the chair on two sides, I can do it here, I can have pillows all around me. Um, yeah, for the, the students in the Kung Fu, the, it would look like this. It would, it would be dropping straight down. 
right? And we would learn to sit. I would teach them to actually sit on the heel so the knee never touches the ground. But the whole mechanics of it is to let go of every joint and just to drop. So you see how my hands don't go forward, my hands just come straight down, relaxed. So you have to practice dropping relaxed. And the first part is not to go forward. If you're coming forward, is to just kind of take that first step and learn to drop straight down. So from standing, learn just learning to drop straight down. Your feet have to shift a little bit. Um, and if you can, you sit on the heel, right? Then your knees don't don't even hit. But if you're falling and you crumple, you just crumple straight down, you might hit your knee, but notice the other leg is safe. And if you come here and you relax, you have to trust that you relax so you can feel the ground, right? Then you can, you can sit. And even if you go all the way down, you just kind of tilt this way. Okay. So, you might, you know, depend, if you practice a lot, you might not get hurt at all. If you practice a little bit, you might get a little hurt, but as opposed to falling forward, right? If you're, right, if you're standing, you can either fall like that <laughs> that's, that's a good example, right? You don't want to be falling like that, right? Everything hits the ground. Instead, I prefer you to learn how to crumple. So, right? you just, just learning to let go of all the joints and just dropping straight down. For, um, for the Kung Fu students, they actually, after a while, they actually learn to pull the feet up into the air while they're pulling the body down because for the fighting, it's not just crumpling, but there's speed involved in it. So if you watch my feet, you can actually see my feet coming up while I'm coming down. I'm not jumping in the air, right? I'm pulling my feet up. I'm actually pulling my body together while I'm coming down. And there's... um. For the fighting side, the, the self-defense side, I, would actually, I might actually be stomping on the ground. So it might be a heavy stomp or it might be a light stomp. It just depends what I want to do. But what that skill translates to is actually f fall prevention and injury prevention to just drop straight down from here. And I think the other, the other thing you have to practice on a practical level is if you're carrying something, yeah, <laughs> you gotta let go of it. You gotta let go of it. Right? What's more valuable, right? Your health, your body, or whatever you're carrying. If it's groceries, if it's your purse, it's, well, you gotta let it go. So you have to practice that reaction too. So, you know, you have to, um, you know, can get a bag, you know, just get a bag with something Put some, put some weight in, inside it or practice carrying packages, large packages and practice falling and just let it go. <laughs> Be willing to sacrifice it, right? You can buy it again, you can replace it. Um, if you want to be like the Kung Fu sh movies, right? Where you can toss everything up in the air while you're falling and catch everything. Then yeah, you can do that with thousands of hours of practice and a lot of retakes but practice letting it go. So if you practice that mentality, when it happens, it's an interesting thing. The more you practice, when something happens, it starts to move in slow motion. And you actually think about it. Um, to this day, I can, I can remember I, when I was performing on the stage and I do a drop kick. So I'm actually dropping on the ground, my right leg is kicking up and I land on this side and I'm supposed to break my fall this way on the ground. So I'm supposed to, to land like this. But what happened is I, I landed more 
um, like this or I, I missed it so my shoulder came up and if you watch the video everything happens fast I, I drop I kick and then I start rolling but in my mind I can still remember this thinking like oh that didn't feel good I can still feel the shifting and <laughs> It's about five, 10 seconds worth when I break it down. Like, oh, that didn't feel good. Oh, that's kind of odd that that happened. But if you watch the video, right, it's just real fast. Um, so the more you practice, the more you get used to a movement, when it happens in real life, everything kind of slows down and you're calmer and you can actually think through it. And when you reveal back, you just have this whole scenario. You know, it's that thing where they say, oh, my, my life, your life flashes before your eyes, right? In a split second, boom, all of these things happen. Um, I, I, I remember at least one person, but I, I kind of remember more than one person talking about how they had to block and somebody was, was attacking them. And instinctively they blocked and I, I can't remember if they struck, but they, they said, yeah, it was like slow motion. They could see the punch coming and they could just, in their mind, they just calmly like, oh, I'm going to pick that spot, paw, and then follow through. But if you don't practice and you don't have that built into you, then instead of slow motion, it's panic, right? So when you trip, it's, and what does panic do? You tighten, and when you tighten and lock, you're falling. So, right, this stick, this stick represents that your whole body is locked up, right? It can't crumple. And that's what happens. So as we age, the statistics, the health statistics all show that um, the older we are, the more deadly the consequence of falling is. Because falling leads to broken bones. Broken bones leads to limit, limited mobility, limited mobility starts to um, accelerate accelerate health problems in our seniors yeah so it's it's a that's one of the statistics that have been kind of drilled into us that uh, falls really account for a lot of senior senior deaths so but for me like i said it's as simple as just just practicing dropping straight down right so just drop straight down and then this back leg the back leg, you can, you can sit, okay. right? So then you can just gently sit and crumple, even if you have to come all the way down. And from there, you know, you can pr do things like practice dropping the purse or the bag next to you. So if I fall on this side, right, that, that bag could act as a cushion. So you can start to pre-plan all these scenarios. For yourself so if you're home well everybody's home right get a nice safe carpeted area use the chair um, and just practice these things get it in your mind so that it should should it ever happen it becomes automatic i think for all of us i think for all of us we know right we're going to trip one day no matter how careful we are and um the shower yeah when you're sliding or any outside. We're in Hawaii, we wear slippers. Uh, a couple weeks ago, oh, when we had the, the, all that rain, I'm outside, I'm trying to put sandbags. I'm wearing slippers. So I'm hydroplaning all over. So those skills come into play during those times. Okay. All right, let's do a little silk reeling since I talked about silk reeling. And, and then we'll do, we'll, we'll just reveal a little bit of the young style. Yeah. So, um, Oh, let's do it standing. I'll, I'll do it standing. I'll do it standing. Yeah. So, you want to want to um, relax, and you want to make sure the palm is tracing, right? and coming up at least at least through the elbow, and then the bottom hand sinks and circles and lifts and falls. Right? You notice I'm not out here, right? pulls it in the the top hand will circle will turn right? the top hand will turn and then shoot under and slide and then they'll lift 
and drop down and they'll scan and then they'll round under. And so this will lift and drop. The other hand will turn under and coming out. The key to the movement is turning your waist, whether you're seated or standing. Yeah. I don't want to back. <laughs> okay. So if you don't turn, your hands don't move. Right? If I turn, it swivels, keeping the center of my palm. Drop your shoulder down, keep your shoulder down, turn the waist. Uh, again, put your mind in your tantin today and tell yourself, make yourself turn from inside. Feel, feel that lower belly, imagine it turning and then just follow that movement. So you're turning from the center. So if you're standing, my legs have to switch. I'll actually shift all the way, step, sink and turn. Notice my leg and hand lift together, right? And sit together and turn and everything swivels. So this is the basic shooting palm with the basic silk reeling, scanning, moving the chi. Um, you know, add that vibrating palm, right? wiggle the fingers, wiggle the palm, relax the shoulder, and just breathe. And by picking up my back leg, I force myself to shift all my weight 100%. The eye scanning level, right? Looking level, scanning the horizon. So coming right out through the fingertips and then coming down. Anybody do hula? Yeah, you should see the hula in here. I was having the discussion with somebody about how um, you know, the Polynesians came through China. And I remember my teacher, my teacher visited China over 10 years in a row. And he talked about how in one of the museums in China, they have the double hauled canoe. Right? The Polynesians left the Asiatic continent. So when they left the Asiatic continent, they left with all the shamanistic knowledge Right, coming out of um, probably Persia at the time. And as immigrants, right, we, we hold on to the cultures and we hold on to the knowledge. We don't change them, right? That's our connection with the past. So when you look at the, um, all the cultures that came down, right, they're still very shamanistic, right? All the healing and such. But in China, <laughs> and in China, that, that knowledge developed, that medical qigong you know, developed into the acupuncture, into, into, into really high-level systems. So, yeah, I think when I look at it, I think it's more than a coincidence that when the Chinese came to Hawaii, they merged with the Hawaiian. And so I have cousins. <laughs> I have Chinese Hawaiian cousins. <laughs> yeah. So feel that swiveling, feel it come out from turning. Right? Okay. So that's the first part. And the second part is, is you practice as you're turning, right? Then you want to sit back with the movement. Yeah. So instead of just turning and swiveling and shifting, um, try to sit back. You don't have to do it all the time. Right? So I'm going to sit back with the movement. Right? Sitting back with the movement. Right? Sitting back with the movement. So when you, draw, when you draw back here, this is like the um, grass the bird's tail, right? Drawing back. You're, you're coming back. Um, that, helps to, that helps to flush the lymphatic system more. So, if you sit back, right, you're, yeah, you're gonna help to flush the lymphatic system. You don't have to do it every time, but um, try to be aware of it and try to practice that. When I first started to do this, I could only do it one direction. In other words, I could sit back, 
and then I have to reset. It just felt odd to me. For you, it might be the same or might be different. So there's so much in these movements to develop. Hello? You're watching. <laughs> you should move while you watch. <laughs> yeah, just sit back. And be aware of what your palms and your arms feel through the scan. Okay? Then the next variation we're going to look at is you can come all the way up the shoulder. Right? And then shoot all the way across. All the way up. So wash through the shoulder joint and then shoot all the way underneath, all the way up through the shoulder joint. So there's so many variations. And so the movement is smaller or larger or shorter or longer. And you can really feel the dance in the hula it's starting to come out. There's, there's spirals and circles right at the end as you start developing. And, and sometimes they'll just come out by themselves. Yeah, coming out. Okay. So um, the basic is just turning and swiveling. Right. Learn to turn and swivel and that initiates the palm. Okay. And then make, turning all the way, right, 180 degrees. Learning just to sink, sink the palms, right, and then learning to sit back in the movement to involve and move the lymphatic system, to flush the lymph nodes. So you can see the circulation you're creating. Right? And then learning to go all the way up through the entire arm right, at any point. And that's at least four different variations that you can work on. Okay. okay. So then from there, right, then the movement's going to start changing. So you come up and, and wave. Right? So if I go from the side as you sweep, Keep the shoulder down, just lift the palm up. Right? And it's about the one hand span, if you want to measure it. It's about a thumb and pinky finger, about 45, 30, 45 degrees to the wrist. Elbow down, shoulder down. And that's how you measure that distance. Yeah? So you're coming up, you'll sweep, and then keep the shoulder and elbow down and just bend the elbow. Right? And then as you turn, it just cuts, cuts across in front of you, right? So from here, as you turn, just, just rotate your palm. So it sweeps up here, comes up to like a wave position. As you turn, right, it just comes here. Okay? And then it's gonna drop down. So if I do the silk reeling, it'll come here, and then they'll wave up. Yeah? And as I turn, the palm will turn, so you have that spiral. Okay. The bottom hand, you just let it run across the body. Right? Just let it lightly, lightly scrape across the body. And stimulate all the, cutting across all the 12 meridians in the central channel. And coming about here, the, the triple burner. So I come across, my right hand comes up, my left hand sits across my body, and as I turn and rotate, my top hand turns, and my left hand pulls, and then it switches. I turn, my top hand rotates, my left hand draws across, keeping the shoulder and elbow down, and it switches, and it turns. Okay. So it's just like the silk reeling, where first you learn just learn the hand movements. Right? And so just let this scoop up, keep the shoulder and elbow down. Right? Shift all the weight and step. Right? And then you could sit back in the movement if you wanted to. It's right? sitting back. Just 
so you could apply the same variations to it which means instead of drawing across the belly let this hand draw across the shoulder so you can see it instead of dropping here right it could drop across the shoulder and drop diagonal so i could come here could come all the way to the shoulder and just then drop to the side all the way to the shoulder and then cutting down all the way to the shoulder and then cutting down so 